Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this video where I'll be discussing with a PhD about his experience in France and Belgium. So currently I'm in Dunkirk, in the beach of Dunkirk, you must have seen it in the movie, it's very famous place uh, for from World War. So in this video we'll discuss exclusively about his experience in France and Belgium. He is currently doing his PhD in France and Belgium in both the countries and tomorrow he's having his PhD defense. So let's introduce to him. You might have seen him in many other videos in the channel also. So let's introduce him. Ta -da. Here you have Madan. Hello. Uh, I'll leave it to Madan to give a short intro and then we can start with the different uh, perspectives about the PhD. So hello everyone. I am Madan Behera. So I am doing my PhD in collaboration with two universities. One university in France, uh, in Dunkirk, and another university in Belgium in a place called Mons. So my PhD is about uh, material science, catalysis and reaction engineering, working towards gas purifications. So I have been working in this project for the last three years, since 2019. And on 20th March 2023, I have my defense. And finally, I will be done with my PhD degree. Okay, thanks Madan for joining the video. So as I said, like you must have seen him many live streams and we also made a popular video on application process in Germany. So his master's was in Germany and now his PhD as he said is in these countries. So let's start with the first question like how was the program scheduled? Uh, like wh which half like one half years, it's for three years, right? The yes. PhD. Yes. So how did you spend like which one half years first and second in Belgium and which one in France? And how was the overall structure and what is your experience? So yes, yeah, so generally in this kind of projects, you already have a structure, the time frame for each of the parts of your project. So in the first part, which was like 1.5 years of my project, it was more uh, in France and then the next 1.5 years was in Belgium but because of COVID we used we couldn't abide by the exact uh, structure of our uh, time frames but all in average it was 1.5 years in France and 1.5 years in Belgium but I started in France so my hosting university was France and after 1.5 years by the start of 2021 I moved to Belgium uh, after completing 1.5 years in Dunkirk and then uh, I spent 1.5 years in Belgium in Mons. Okay. Okay, then let's go to the, like in, as I have said in many videos, you might have seen like in Europe, uh, most of the PhDs, they get like a salary. Uh, so how was your PhD? Like, did you also get a salary, like a job? And how did it vary, like approximate gross salary in both Belgium and also France? What was the yes. variation? So in my case, I was always getting salary from the French government. So it was the whole PhD was paid from France. So I was getting the pay scale according to the French PhDs. So in France, you normally get around 1800 euros as your gross salary. And after taxes and all other deductions, generally it is on an average 1460 to 1480 euros per month. So while in case of Belgium, normally people get more than this uh, salary for sure. But in my case, I was always getting salary from the French university. Therefore, my salary always stayed the same all the years of my PhD. Okay. And I also heard that during COVID, because of the disruption, because your work involves mm -hmm. lab work. Mm -hmm. So you also got a brief extension because of that, yes. right? Yeah. So generally in France, at first, generally in France, the PhD is for three years. And they are very strict about this time frame because at the end of three years, they make you defend your thesis by anyhow. But in case of special circumstances like COVID, we were able to get an extension of six months. So in my case, when I say extension, it means it was a paid extension. So they gave me salary for six extra months. So it was possible for such cases, but in general, it is not possible unless and until you have some special cases, could be pandemics, could be your health conditions, mm -hmm. could be any problem that was unavoidable in the labs or something else, then you can get an extension. Okay. Uh, so during your PhD, apart from research, what mm -hmm. are you supposed to do? Like, did you need to like do some kind of uh, teaching or supervision? Uh, what were other responsibilities apart from research and working on your project? So yes, in my in my PhDs, so 
I did supervision, so I did I, I did supervise the ma master's project during my PhD. However, since I was in a mobility program, so I had to move from lab to lab. I didn't find a lot of time uh, for uh, taking courses. Moreover, the courses in France are generally taken in French, so it's always better to have a good French level of lang uh, language proficiency, uh, proficiency level of in French. But uh, since I didn't have it, so I was not preferring to take a course. But I was uh, I was proposed to take one course, but unfortunately I couldn't because of the language and also because of my mobility program. But I did uh, supervise a master's project for six months. Okay. And uh, in your project, like was it like only with the university or it was also with the industry? So in my case, the PhD was more, it, it was, uh, the research was done in a uh, university, but was funded by an industry. So the industry established a research forum in the university, like, which is called as a research chair. Okay. So for the last uh, eight to 10 years, they have been working closely with the university for development of technologies in the field of carbon capture for mm -hmm. cement industries. So they are working on different technologies. So I was in the last part of this project and the project will terminate like by the end of this year, 2023. Okay. So if you are curious and you want to contact Madan, as you might have seen in previous videos also, you, I'll leave his LinkedIn details in the description of the video. Just click it and don't bother him with some generic questions. Just ask him like after doing proper research, like what you really want to know, which is not available online. Uh, so. Uh, moving ahead, uh, how is the visa process? Because when you are like one half years in one country, one half in other country, these short, short terms, even though you are doing your PhD, how is the immigration and visa? What was your experience? How does it happen? So in my case, so uh, we start first got the visa from France because it was my hosting university. So in France, normally for doctoral students, you get a, get a visa for three years altogether since it's a three years program so they give you altogether three years of uh, uh, visa so when i moved to belgium so i had to re uh, reapply for a residence permit that we call so in that since even if it is a schengen country mm -hmm. if you are staying more than 90 days and you for a work purpose then you have to apply regular uh, like a traditional way of applying a long stay visa so in the long stay visa you, uh, you have to apply with the documents and so on and so forth. So I did the same. But in Belgium, they give you residence permit for one year and you have to renew it every year. So okay. it is not like France with three years altogether. Even if you have a contract for three years or four years. And it is also same with the PhD students who are fully in Belgian framework. Still, they get a visa for only one year and they have to renew every year. Mm -hmm. So uh, considering again that you are living the short terms in both the countries, so how was your experience of housing? What were the average expenses in housing and food? And uh, how easy it is to get housing for this one and a half years or something like that? Yes, yeah, so in my case, the first housing that I took was in France. And normally where I am, we have student accommodations and we have private companies like the Immobilier, the, like we say is the people who are responsible for providing you housing and normally they are furnished houses so you can have them and uh, generally they are there are some vacant places but still it depends on which time of the year you are searching for the houses in case of belgium it was also easy for me because i was applying through university accommodation so it was easier for me to apply for uh, through university accommodation and generally they have some spaces uh, like apartments that are booked only for phd students so if there is a phd student coming in by a mobility program uh, normally they uh, give the priority and give you the accommodation so it was easier for me to find okay. an accommodation in belgium but in case of the cost of accommodation i would say it again depends on the type of apartment you are taking but normally they are nearly the same price the price is nearly the same, but the price per meter square, I think, is higher in case of Belgium okay. than in France. But the student accommodation in general absolutely is uh, similar to each other. So roughly it's around 400. Uh, it will start from 480 euros, can okay. go as I, 
high as 550 euros mm. but sometimes it can go until 600 euros depending on the meter square of your apartment okay yes and uh, what are the requirements of your program like in terms of publications like do you need to publish something write a report or before you defend your thesis what are the main requirements okay so since my phd is more in the french framework so they had to follow the french framework more and then the belgian framework but in general you have to publish at least one research paper be it uh, uh, in the form of a conference proceeding be it in a journal or you can do an oral presentation in an international conference so it is a mandatory before registering for your thesis defense and before doing the thesis defense and in general you have to submit your thesis report mm -hmm. which you have to submit at least two months before your uh, scheduled thesis date okay so for example i have my thesis on 28th of march that so is my, tomorrow that is tomorrow and my deadline for the submission of the thesis manuscript was 28th january so it was okay. two months exactly and uh, you can be one or two days delayed it's normal uh, mm -hmm. the doctoral school also take that into notice but generally it is two months and uh, yes and normally during your phds you have uh, you have a you have a committee meeting okay. that is there will be three people one president and two examinators every year they will be reviewing your thesis and thesis progress they will giving you their ideas and their uh, advices during the research and will be helping you to know how you can explore more in the research field because mm -hmm. they are generally the experts in your field and there will be these people will also be in the final set of defense. jury members in the defense as well yeah. so coming back to the last points of the video uh, how was your uh, uh, how much time did it take you to write the thesis and the final question after that is like uh, how is the phd defense like how many times do you need to do because you are in two universities so what's the entire process how is it managed and everything so yes so normally when you write a thesis we are advised to start it three months before the deadline is uh, uh, is uh, scheduled mm -hmm. So it normally takes three months, but in my case, it was easier because I was always putting my data into a report since we have a committee meeting every year. So we were doing that. Uh, so I already had a lot of uh, material already structured in the form of a thesis manuscript. So I didn't take a lot of time to, uh, to present my, to have the final version of my PhD manuscript. So it was not a problem for me, but in general, the time frame is for uh, three months. What was your next question? Uh, about the defense, like how is it structured, managed, mm -hmm. because you are with two mm -hmm. universities. So in my case, since it is not, uh, uh, si since it is between France and Belgium, so we have to follow the framework for both the universities. So in case of Belgium, you have two defense. So one is called private defense, where you have to defend your thesis. Uh, in front of the jury members only. So mm -hmm. there will be no outside member from the jury attending your defense. So in this case, they will ask you all the questions necessary from your manuscript. And it is normally a long form format. So it may take more than three to four hours sometimes, depending on the size of your thesis and your, the questions and the way you are answering. And this normally in this defense, they normally ask you to have a short presentation, giving brief, very brief overview of your work, your key conclusions that would help them to summarize your whole work. And then they will start questions. In uh, then you have the uh, de prior public defense. Uh, in the public defense, you have to present the same uh, manuscript, but uh, now you have a presentation for 40 to 45 minutes. That's in France combined public defense yes but in general i'm talking about just the belgium ah, okay, okay so in belgium this is what happens so in public defense still you have to give 40 to 45 minutes of defense mm -hmm. uh, presentation mm -hmm. in front of the same set of jury members but in this case you will have more public coming into your defense it is the same framework for france but in france you have only one uh, defense you don't have okay. two defenses okay so this is the only difference uh, we have. But in my case, I do too. Mm -hmm. And the second public defense is a common one between the French uh, university and the Belgian university.
here in Dunkirk. Yeah. So as you can see, we are already, it's very windy yeah. and we are already freezing. Thank you, Madan, for Thank sharing you. your experiences and helping out people who want to have these kind of, because many of you asked me before, like how to have a uh, inter-country um, PhD or something like that. So it's better to have this kind of experiences. And I hope you like this video. Do share this video and don't forget to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel as we are already freezing. Yeah. See you in the next video. Goodbye from Dunkirk, France. Peace. Bye -bye.